Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we have come to rejoice and be glad in it. We pray that you have had a blessed day, and just ask that you just open up your hearts and your minds as we go into God's word and as we just spend some time worshiping him through his word. Because you can worship through the reading of the scripture and worship through your meditations on the word of God. So we just ask right now, as we go before the Lord in prayer, that you open up your hearts and your minds and your spirits to come before the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. For truly you are God and there is nobody else like you. So we thank you for this day. God, we thank you how you have given us another chance you, to be in your presence. Another chance to be in your land. Another chance to be alive, God. Hallelujah. Another chance just to see all the wonderful works that you have done. So we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. And we praise your name for truly you are great and you are mighty. Even in the midst of what's going on, God, you are still good. Yes, you are. And God, so it is our desire that we let the whole world know that you are still good. So we thank you today for our faith. We thank you that we have faith in you. Hallelujah. And our faith is strong. And we thank you that we know that we're coming out of this thing and we're coming out of it with victory. So we thank you because your word says thanks be unto you who has given us the victory through your son, Jesus thank Christ. You. And we thank you, God, that he also always causes us to triumph. So we thank you for being winners, and we're winners because of you. So tonight, God, whatever it is that's on our hearts, whatever it is that's in our spirits right now, Lord, we ask, God, that you would ease our minds, ease our spirits, and Hallelujah. let us know that you are taking care of everything, God. We are on your mind, hallelujah. Our hallelujah. problems are on your agenda, God. And even though you might not work them out when we want you to, God, we know that you are working them out and they're going to be worked out in our favor. Hallelujah. So we thank you tonight, God. So I ask that you bless everyone who's watching this. God, bless every family member that's connected, God. Bless Cedar Creek Community Church. Hallelujah. Bless every church in this community, in this nation. God, bless South Carolina. Bless the United States. Bless the whole entire world. God, we want the people to know there is a bomb in Gilead. There Hallelujah. is healing in the name of Jesus. So we call on the name of Jesus, Jesus. right now. Hallelujah. God, we call on the power of the name Hallelujah. of Jesus right now. We call on the safety of the name Hallelujah. of Jesus right now because your word says the name of the Lord is a strong tower yes, and God. the righteous can run in and Hallelujah. they are safe, God. So we thank you that tonight we are safe in the safe. name of Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. We thank you tonight that we are kept, God, because you said if we keep our minds stayed on you, you will keep us in perfect peace. Yes, we thank will. you that Hallelujah. we are kept tonight. Oh, we thank you that we are covered and we are protected Jesus. because your word says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, name God, of Jesus. we thank you that we are not alone because you said you'll never leave us, nor forsake us, you're with us always, even until the end of this very age. God, we thank you for every promise yes. in the word because your word says the promises of God are yea and amen. Yes. Amen. We thank you, God, that you are not a man that you should lie or a son of man that you have to repent. We Hallelujah. thank you, God, that if you said it, we can believe it. So, God, we believe every promise that's in your book tonight. Hallelujah. We believe every word that has been spoken out of the prophets. We believe every word that has been spoken out of disciples. We will speak every word that's been spoken by your son, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for the word of God you, that's given us life, that's given us strength right now, and we stand on it right now yes, in God. the name of Jesus. Jesus. God, we come against every attack Hallelujah. of the enemy. We call Satan yes, a liar that he is yes, and he, he is a deceiver. But we thank you, God, that you have put him under our yes, feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You said we will crush his head and we are going to do that tonight in the name, in the of, name Jesus of Jesus Christ. We've come to slay demons. We've Hallelujah. come to rebuke the devourer. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. for strength Hallelujah. in your name. Hallelujah. So tonight, God, as we open up this word, we say, word of God, speak right speak now in Lord. the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, speak to our spirits. God, give us everything we need in this moment. We love you tonight, and we adore you. And God, everything that we've been praying for, believing for, and asking you for, it is so, it is well, and it's already done. It's in already the name done. of Jesus, we pray. We give thanks. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, and I have Tyson here to, with me tonight, and we're going to be discussing um, the topic, Faith Over Fear. And I've seen a lot of people posting that and t-shirts and all that stuff during this time, but I, I hope we really know what all these cliches mean and all this stuff that we're saying now, that we truly know what it means and we truly believe it, because we must truly have faith over fear. 
now. We've got to know that we have faith in Jesus Christ, and our faith in Jesus will get us through whatever we are going through during this time. Amen. And so, Tyson, when you hear that faith over fear, what comes to your mind about that? So what just came to my mind about it is when you were praying, you said that we're going to stomp on the devil's head. Yes. So we know that it's, the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. So if it doesn't come from God, then it has to come from somewhere. Right. So fear, in my mind, is just another attack of the enemy trying to get us to take our focus off of God and put our focus on a fear that we really conjure up ourselves. Right. So when we say that the devil is up under our feet, that means that our faith, which is in us, is going to be over the fear, which is going to be underneath our feet. Correct. Hallelujah. So that brings us to one of our scriptures tonight, um, 2 Timothy um, verses, chapter 1, verse 7, which says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. So like you just said, God did not give us fear. That's something that didn't come from God. Amen. Fear. I uh, heard somebody use this acronym, false evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. So that means something that, 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 that we think is supposed to take us out, something that we think is stronger than us, something that we think is more powerful than us, something that we think can beat us, something that we think can kill us, is really false evidence. Right. But in our mind, we've allowed it Amen. to come in and take over, so now we think it's real. But fear does not come from God. So I, I preached this before. Why I'm going to receive something that didn't come from God? Amen. It's a, fear is not a gift. Hallelujah. Fear is something that we pick up. Because it says God has not given us a spirit of fear. Amen. So he has not given. That's not what he wants in our heart. He knows that's one of our human emotions that comes out of our flesh. Yes, but that's God. not what God gave us. God Amen. gave us power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. So let's go. If you got to take it all the way back to Hebrews um, 11 and 1, which tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's what faith is, the substance of things hoped for. You have to have a hope. Amen. So in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this crisis, in the midst of the, all this sickness, you have to have a hope. Your hope has to be that God is going to bring healing out of this. Your hope has to be there will be a cure, there will be a, a, a vaccine or something Hallelujah. that will stop this. You yes, have God. to have that hope. Your hope cannot be be that people are going to die and everybody going to die, I'm going to die, my whole family going to be sick. That's that right. cannot be your hope because your hope has to go above what you see with your eyes. Hallelujah. That's why it says the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. I, right now, we don't see um, um, an end to this. We hear that they say the curve is flattening, yes. but we still see people getting sick and people are still dying, so we really can't see that right now. Yes. But the evidence of things not seen. God said, you don't have to see it, That's but right. you got to believe what Hallelujah. I said. Hallelujah. I am the Lord that healeth you. Yes. So that means even if you are sick in your body and on that doctor's report, you can't see it, your faith will say, I am still healed. Oh. So that's why you've got to make sure your faith is over your fear. The Bible says mustard seed faith. If you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to that mountain and say, be thou removed, and the mountain has to be moved. So God is telling us, all you got to do is believe. But believe and put action with it. James said, faith without works is dead. So we got to work our faith. And I believe Tyson, that's the real reason why people are going crazy. People are losing their faith. People are, are, are depressed. People are confused. It's because they are allowing fear, that's right. doubt, and uncertainty to take over their mind. Mm -hmm. And to add what you, to what you just said, faith without works is dead. We think that a lot of times what that phrase means is that, okay, if we have faith in God to do something for us, but we don't put any effort into it, you know, he's not going to do anything. But if we look a little bit deeper, faith without works means that if you're going to have faith, you have to walk that faith. So faith walking, faith talking, faith living. So you can't say all year long, okay, faith without works is dead, and now the pandemic is here. Right. And now you claim to have faith, but you know, you're, you're, you're being discouraging, and you're, you know, you're, you're downtrodden, you're, you're, you're cast down. And so um, one thing that you said about hope, uh, so the actual definition of hope biblically is the desire and expectation of something good. It means confidence in a future event that may not be founded in certainty, but is grounded on substantial evidence. So what does that mean? That means that hope is grounded on the substantial evidence of the things that we've seen God do in the past. Right. So if God has done it before, he can do it again. The Bible says that he can do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that works what? 
within in us. us. Amen. Yes. Amen. So you've got to have a foundation. So that's why during this time, we have to get our relationship with God stronger. We have to make it stronger. Amen. Because that's all we have. I, I, he is our foundation. So you've got to have a foundation to put your feet in, and then so you can build your hope. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus', Jesus. blood and Hallelujah. his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's a hymn. But, but we got to believe that Christ is our solid rock. So you must in this time, in order for you to come out of this thing, is have a foundation in him. Amen. You've got to, because with Christ, you don't have to be afraid. With God, you don't have to be afraid. You activate faith when you trust him. Amen. So therefore, if you have no trust, that's where the fear comes in. Amen. Um, and so you know, uh, a lot of times when you do team activity, they do the activity where they, a trust activity where you stand in front of somebody and they ask you to fall back. And right. you have to trust the person to catch you. And so if the person behind you don't really know them, if you do a team building, it's kind of hard for you to trust that person Amen. to catch you. Because I ain't no little boy, so you, I, you're not going to drop me, because if you drop me, it's going to be some trouble. And so trouble. I'm trying to figure out, do I, have, I got to build up my trust enough to fall back and get you to catch me. Amen. So I need to see you catch somebody else my size first to know that I can trust you to catch me. So I said all that to say, when you are trusting God, like you said, you got to see what he's done before. Hallelujah. If God has Heals not even you before he heals somebody else. That should be enough for you to trust him to fall in his arms for Amen. him to heal you. If God has delivered somebody else, he might not have delivered you yet, but that's his deliverance of somebody else is enough for you to trust him yes, to fall is. back on him. Trust falling back, putting all your weight on God. You don't have to do this alone. Amen. You're not, he didn't give you um, 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 a spirit of loneliness. He said, I've given you. Power, love, and a sound mind. And, it, and Paul is giving, telling us these are the tools that you need in order to succeed. He was talking to Timothy. Timothy was a young minister. He knew people were going, Paul knew people were going to talk down to him. He knew he was going to have to face a whole lot. And why did Paul know that? Because he faced a lot. Amen. But he was telling Timothy, you got to do this work. We've got to do this work. We can't allow Corona to stop us from doing the work of God. Amen. And that's why I'm just, my, my, my spirit has been leaping to see how this has been stretching the church, has been stretching the saints to do stuff they hadn't done before. This has been stretching us to go outside of the box to do stuff that people have been doing a long time, but we said we ain't need all that. But now we don't have no other choice to do that. But see, God will put us in the place where you can no longer use your fear and your doubt to stop what he's trying to do. Amen. So P Paul was telling P Timothy, let me take everything out of you that's not that's going to keep you from doing the work. You not you don't have to be afraid, because before they told him to stir up the gift. Amen. You already got it in you. When I lay hands on you, when you, it, 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 it was already in you through your grandmama and your mama. You already got all that. And I, and I, I stirred it up. So now I'm telling you, you got what you need in order to be an effective leader. You don't have fear. That's not what you have. So I'm telling everybody that's watching, you don't have fear. Amen. Get that out of you. You might be uncertain. You might be a little bit worried. But you say, I ain't scared. I am not afraid of the enemy. I'm not afraid of this virus. I might be cautious Amen. and doing things to protect myself, but I'm not afraid. That's why David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and I'm going to keep speaking that Hallelujah. until the day I die. I will fear no evil. Death is all around us, Hallelujah. but I don't have to be afraid of it. Glory to God. Even if we get afflicted and God decide to take us on, if that's the will of God, you don't have to be afraid of it because if you live right, you on the other side going to have joy forevermore. And everybody say, well, I'm afraid to die. Okay, that is because we don't want to leave our family members behind and we don't know how it's going to feel or the, the process of death, but don't be afraid of Hallelujah. death because if you live right, there's a blessing in going to yes, live man. with God. I know we ain't ready right now, but we ain't got nothing to do with that, so we got to live our lives so that if it does come, that we are not afraid of it, we accept it and go where God has called us to go. Amen. That's Amen. Amen. I would say, when you said just now uh, about us dying, the Bible says we are confident, yes, well, please, rather that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So if we truly believe in God, if we truly trust in him, which means to believe in his strength, then we know that in the event that God did allow some of us to leave here and we are saved, yeah. then all that we're doing is going back to be with him. Right. There's nothing better than that. Right. And so 
Paul is telling Timothy, and I'm telling you through the words of Paul, telling the church now, the people of God, you don't have to be afraid. Amen. Don't be timid. <laughs> God has not, get, take, that, take that away. I've given you everything you need. You have power. You got love and you got a sound mind. You got to know the power that's in you. Power. Dunamis power. That means that's not power to control somebody, but power to do what God has called you to do. Amen. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We stop right there, but it says according to the power Hallelujah. that worketh within us. Paul is trying to tell Timothy, God can do everything that you need him to do. And with him, y'all can do all kinds of things. But you got to first activate your power on Amen. the inside of you. Amen. All of you got power on the inside of you. So use this time to activate your power. You don't even know how strong you are. Mm. You don't even know how much power you've got. You don't know the ability that's inside of you. This is now time to turn your power on. This is now time to get connected and activate what God has placed on the inside. It's in you. Amen. It's, you got everything you need to be successful. You got everything you need to win. So you got to know this is what God has given you. He's given you power. And, right. and he's given you love. Tyson, what do you think he's talking about when he's talking about love? When he's talking about love, I think it goes back to the fact that if we go all the way back to Calvary, even though Easter just ended, we serve a Savior who, who died yeah. on a cross. He was crucified just for our sins. And I believe that the Bible says when he died, he gave up the ghost, right? right? right. And that's the power that dwells on the inside of us. So if the same power that Jesus had to stay up on the cross and die for our sins is the same power that dwells within us on a daily basis, there is nothing that we cannot do right. with that power. There's nothing that we cannot do if God is in us the way that the Bible says he is. So if his word is true and he is who he says he is, that means that we can do anything and everything that we need to do, even in times of a pandemic. Right. And so the love, the love, like I said, the love that Jesus had for us, that he died for us. His love to serve others. Jesus came into this world. Even though he was human in flesh, he knew who he was. Amen. He had the power to do anything. He had the ability to, he was the king of kings. Amen. He was the Lord. He's the son of God. But he still served. He still loved every, every I mean everybody. Amen. Jesus dealt with everybody. He loved everybody. The love of God was shown through him. And so that's the power that we have to show love. Amen. We got love in us. So during this time, we got to love on one another. Mm -hmm. Check on one another. Amen. Be kind to one another. Serve one another. If you can help somebody, help somebody. If you're still working during this time and you know somebody that ain't working, send them a cash app. Amen. Send, give, buy them some groceries or something. Bless them because everybody doesn't have that blessing. I'm blessed to still be able to be able to work and be, still be able to receive a paycheck to take care of my family. But I don't have a problem blessing others because Amen. that's the love of God that has been shown. Because I do expect that if I was in the same position, people who love God would show that love to me. So that's Amen. why Paul said as an effective leader, Timothy, you've got to be able to show the love of Christ. That's right. You got to have power to do the work of Christ, but you got to be able to show the love of Christ. Love is patience. Let's find some patience, because I know I might lose my patience a lot of times, but I but I had to pick it back up because that is a that is a characteristic of love. Amen. Love is kind. Long is and love is long. So it lasts a long time. It's not love is unconditional. Quit putting your conditions on how you love somebody. Putting your conditions on how you gonna serve somebody or Amen. do that for them. God didn't have conditions when He saved you. Amen. When He sent Jesus to die for you, He did it because He loved you. Amen. And all you got to do to live a good life is to receive him and do his will. He loved us enough to die for us. Amen. And we should love him enough to serve him. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm back to love, what you just said. The Bible says, how can we love God whom we've never seen yes. and not love our brother who we see every day? Right. So I think such an important concept for us to understand is that, especially in times like this, a lot of the saints like to get all deep and spooky and say, Oh, we in the last of the last days, and yet that, that's good, but a lot of people are saying it, but they're still not showing love. And so I think a lot of times we forget, no matter how holy we feel like we live, the Bible says our righteousness is as, is as filthy rags. 
no matter how holy that we say we live, no matter how much we go to church, no matter how much we go to Bible study, no matter how many Facebook lives you log into, if you don't love everybody and the Lord come back right now, you will be doomed to an eternity in hell if the Lord decides that right. because of the fact that you, you're not showing love. It's so important for us to love everybody who we come across each and every day. And love is not what love says. Love is what love does. Amen. So power, love, and a sound mind. That, that means it's the idea of being calm, self-control, in contrast to panicking, Amen. in contrast to confusion that comes in a fearful situation. See, this way, this way you got to watch it because what's your response? We've been talking about this for the last few weeks. What's your response? Because the devil wants you mm -hmm. to respond in panic. Yes, he does. The devil wants you to be confused. The devil wants you to be fearful. The devil wants you to be doubtful because he knows anytime he, you get in those particular emotions, those states, that's when he can come in. Amen. But when your mind is clear, yeah. when your focus is on Christ, Amen. when you don't have any doubt about who you serve and where your help is coming from, mm -hmm. he don't have any foothold. He don't have any stronghold. And that's why the Bible says pulling down every imagination of stronghold. Yes, when you have trust in God, mm -hmm. you are pulling down that stronghold Amen. that the enemy is trying to put on you. All you got to do is put your faith over fear. Amen. Your faith weighs more than your fear. Mm -hmm. Amen. Your faith will always come out on top. Amen. You got to know that God does not want us to be afraid. Amen. Amen. God does not want his people to be afraid. That's why he gives us tools and gives us strength, gives us power to overcome that. He said in his word, in Paul said this, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Hallelujah. God knows that we are weak, but his strength comes to us. All you got to do is say, Lord, I need your help. I need your help. Lord, I need your help. Make me strong, God. God. Make me strong in the power of God. We can be strong today. So you got to get rid of fear and allow your faith to come into action. Amen. And I, I, one thing that I was thinking about the other night is that uh, a lot of times we say, Oh, uh, the 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 devil is 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 already in our future, and 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 we and we come up with doubts about the things that are ahead. But I think what we have to realize is that God is the author and the finisher of our faith, of our life, of our future, of all that. And so, for us to say that the devil is already ahead of us and all things are not going to get better, we're speaking on the future. Right. So how can we? Sometimes it's it's not the fact that the devil is already there, but we speak him into right. that part of our life. The, the reality is the devil does not have the authority. To go into your future and disturb what's already there. Amen. He doesn't have the authority to do that. God is the author of that. All the devil has the ability to do is he, the devil, matter of fact, he can't even walk next to you because God and the devil can't be in the same place. And the Bible says that God walks with us. Okay, everywhere that we go, he walks with us. The only thing that the devil has the ability to do is get behind you right. and try to pull you back from behind while God grabs your hand and leads you forward. So a lot of times we get caught up because we're looking back. You're still looking back at how bad things have gotten. Okay, we've got to look ahead. We've got to focus on uh, focus on the mark, the prize, which is in the high calling, of, uh, which is Jesus Christ. We have to we have to focus on that. We have to make sure that we're looking ahead because as soon as we look back, just like what happened to uh, who was that Lot's wife yeah. in the all the way back in the book of Genesis, right? She was instructed not to look back, right? And as soon as she looked back, she you know uh, she was that was it for her. Right. All hope was lost for her. As soon as you look back, as soon as you start focusing on what's behind you. All hope will be lost for you. The Bible says that the man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is, is, is unfit for the kingdom of God. That's what it says. That's what it says. So, so in Psalms 18, it's another scripture. Psalms 18. Um, let me see from where I want to start. I, I'll read the whole thing. Um, it says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. God loves and endures forever. Amen. So we've got to give thanks during this crisis, during this time, give thanks because he is good and his love for us endures forever. So it says, let all Israel repeat. His faithful love endures forever. Or another translation says, his mercy endures forever. Amen. So you've got to know that God is with you. You've got to know that God is on our side. Amen. So it says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Then he needs to say, let Israel say, 
His mercy endures forever. So this is like a, a call and response song. This is people telling people, now let the house of Aaron now say, his mercy endures forever. Amen. Let those who fear the Lord now say, his mercy endures forever. And so what um, here is, it says fear the Lord. That's not mean I'm afraid of the Lord. That means I worship him. I reverence him. I honor him. I, I, I honor the deity that he is, the power that he is in my life. So um, I'm a part, we're a part of Israel. We're a part of Israel. We're talking about not just the physical country of Israel, but we're talking about the, the tribe, the, the people of Israel. We're all a part of that Amen. as Christians. The and then the house of Aaron, that, that covenant, that, 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 Levi that Leviticus, we are that people. So we got to say it again. His mercy endures forever. Amen. And then all who fear the Lord, all of us who worship the Lord, the Psalms 18, we have to say his mercy endures forever. Amen. His mercy, it covers us. His mercy, Jesus Christ is a, 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 the manifestation of the grace and mercy of God. Jesus endures forever. His power endures forever. And so it says, I called on the Lord in distress. This is verse 5. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. Amen. It says, the, the, my, verse 6, my favorite verse out of this, it says, the Lord is on my side. Hmm. Another translation said, the Lord is for me. He will help me. Uh -huh. So the Lord is for me. I will have no fear. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Mm, my God. Amen. And this other translation said, what can mere people do to me? Nothing. Amen. The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see the desire on those, see my desire on those who hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Amen. So and then it goes down and says, it is better to trust in the Lord. Yes, sir. Take refuge in the Lord than to trust people. That's verse 8 and 9. Then it says, 9 is better to take refuge in the Lord to trust princes. Quit putting your trust in the government Amen. to save you. Amen. Quit putting your trust in the president, the governor, or whoever your boss is That's on right. your job to save you. That's, That's right. not their job. God didn't create them to be your savior. He created them to be in that position that they're in for this particular time to do the governing of this land. But right. we are not of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. So we are not... We don't have to be bothered by the decisions that they make. We Amen. should go to God in prayer because we say, well, God, if it don't sound right, God, this don't sound right to my spirit. So, God, you're going to have to cover me uh, uh, until this thing passes. You're going to have to cover me until that particular governor or the president or my boss figure out that that decision that they made was a bad one right. because I don't have the power to change their mind. But guess who has the power? God has the Hallelujah. power to persuade. And even if he don't change their mind, he has enough the power to cover you in the midst of yes, somebody else's Hallelujah. mess that you yes, won't fall. So I will not put my trust in man. I will not put my confidence in man. I will not put my confidence in princes, people in high ruling places. My trust is in the Lord. Yes, it is. Because he will help me. Glory Amen. to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't have to fear because the Lord is on my side. That's where your fear goes below your faith. Amen. Because Amen. the Lord is on your side. Truly, if you believe that, then you can trust him in the midst of a crisis. Amen. Amen. And an example that I would use like for people who are visual. So it's like if I were to expect somebody half my size, like Reverend Butler said earlier, to stand behind me and catch my weight as I fall back. That don't make no sense. It, that, that's, that, that looks funny. So that's the same way that we look to God. When we put all of our trust, all of our hope, all of our confidence in man to hold us up, knowing that God is the only one who has the strength and the ability to truly hold us up and support us in every way that we need. Right. So really, God is looking at us like we're crazy because we're putting all our hope and our confidence in man. Right. And then we fall back on him and we hit the floor. And now we're trying to figure out what happened. Right. You put your confidence in the wrong one. You put your trust in the wrong one. You put your trust in the one who didn't have any strength. Correct. We, we, we are trusting the wrong people. Amen. That's why it says, I call upon the Lord. Amen. I can't, I can't call President Trump. I don't have his number. 
I, I can't call Governor McMaster. I don't have his number. You can call their office, but you're not going to get them. Amen. You can't call the senators. Well, some of you might have a direct connection with them, but you most of the time you'll get somebody that represents them. But I don't have to do that Amen. when I call on the Lord. Amen. <laughs> I can call him for myself, and I have direct access to him. I call upon the Lord. It says, in my distress. We are all distressed right now. Hallelujah. So in our distress, what we have to do is call on the Lord. And this verse tells us, verse 5, it says, I call on the Lord in my distress. And guess what? He answered me. Yes, God. <laughs> he answered me. I'm here to tell you, God will answer. Yes, he will. But you got to call. Mm. <laughs> you ever had somebody that say, well, yeah, I ain't talked to you. you like, well, you ain't calling me. They waiting on you to call. Amen. But if you if you wanted to talk to me that bad, you could have called me for yourself. Amen. I probably would have answered, but you didn't call. God is saying that right now. Amen. You say, well, Lord, I don't know what to do. Well, you ain't calling me. Mm. I got the answer for you, but you ain't calling me. Well, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Lord, I was just waiting for you to ask me. I was just waiting for you to pray to me. I was just waiting for you to say, Lord, I need your help because I have the answer. God has the answer mm -hmm. for you. This, the psalmist says, I called on the Lord in distress, and it got a busy sign. That ain't what it said. That's not what it said. It, said, it, it just say, I called on the Lord in distress, and my call was disconnected. It says, I called on the Lord in distress, and he answered me. And guess what? He set me free. See, we, <laughs> hallelujah. He, he, he answered me and set me free. And then another translation said he set me in a broad place. Amen. That means a place where you can comfortably stay. I, I got room. Hallelujah. I got room to breathe. I got room to grow. You got to call on the Lord. In your that's how you get out of fear when you call the Lord. Because it says the Lord answered me and set me on in, in, in a broad place. He set me free. Then, it, then the psalmist says the Lord is on my side. And then his declaration was, I will not fear. Amen. Glory to God. So once I called on the Lord, once he answered me, once he freed me, my mind is now grown. Like Titus said, I got the trust to know that he won't let me fall. Amen. So guess what? When I come to a situation again, when I think I'm about to stumble, I will not fear. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's already caught me before. Already. He's already saved me before. You have been living, I don't know how many years you've been living, but God has kept you through danger, seen and unseen. Hallelujah. And if it's meant for this to take you out, it will. But if it's not, you will live and not die Hallelujah. and declare the works of the Lord. So don't fear, have faith. Stand on the promises of God. Believe in his word. I want you to read the whole Psalm 118 and know that it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Amen. So when you see people on social media going crazy about what the president said or what government master said or, 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 or what their boss doing on or what people or other people, somebody in their family said, Amen. tell them to put, put, put that trust in that person. Quit putting their confidence in that person. Amen. Hallelujah. My confidence and my hope and my trust is in him Hallelujah. because he won't let me down. So you've got to trust in the Lord Amen. with all thy heart and lean out into thy own understanding and all your ways acknowledge Hallelujah. him Hallelujah. and he will direct yes, your path. He, will. he ain't say trust in man. Because he even said another scripture says some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we will trust in, in the name, name of the Lord. Lord. You got to know who to put your trust in. Trust and fear go together. Because if you don't have trust, you'll have fear. But if you have trust, you won't be afraid. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how you overcome your fear with your Amen. faith. Your trust will make you have faith in God. Trust him and never die. Fear will always be there. Amen. I'm not saying it's going nowhere. It's going to always be there. It's going to always be trying to rear his little head. But as long as you got trust, Amen. it can knock fear down every time. That's why I said faith over fear is pushing it down. Amen. Your trust is pushing it down. Your, 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 your strength in God is pushing down that fear. God doesn't want you to be afraid. And we're not going to be afraid. We're going to trust God and believe. Tax, you want to add anything before we close out? Uh, just what you said about the large place. I mean, God is setting us in a large place. The yes. psalmist didn't say that there is anybody around. That's why some of us feel alone right now. God, God is saying to us, he's setting us in a large place so that no one is around us and no one can help us, no one can get in our ear. But it's just us and God. And he wants us to fully put our trust and put our dependence in him. 
because he is the only one who can get us through what we're going through right now. And if we trust him, if we believe in him, if it's his will, then he will bring us out. Amen. Pastor, you want to close us out in prayer? Okay, yes, sir. Uh, let us pray. Kind Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you right now, God, to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord. God, thank you that you're a God that we can trust on. Thank, thank you that you, we're, you're a God that we can depend on. Thank Hallelujah. you that for being a God that we can lean on. In the name of the in Lord the Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for thank being you, the only wise God who has never told us a lie Hallelujah. and never made a mistake. God, we know that if we follow your yes, principles, Jesus. God, Hallelujah. we can have your promises. God, we can yes, have Jesus. prosperity. We Hallelujah. can have good success. We can have protection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we just stay in your word, God, Glory help us to God. stay in your word, God. Hallelujah. Help us to read your word. Help us thank to live you, your word, God. Glory help us to God. have Hallelujah. faith. Yes, God, help God. us to believe in you. Some trust in chariots. Hallelujah. And others in horses, but we will trust we in, the will trust of the in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name thank of the Lord you, is Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we thank, thank you for you. everything that's in your yes, name. Lord. In your name is yes, deliverance. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, in your name is power. In your name is yes, healing. Jesus. Hallelujah. In your name is chain breaking. Hallelujah. And we thank you for that right thank now you, in, the in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for healing sickness. Hallelujah. There's no virus that can prevail against the blood. God, Hallelujah. if the blood comes against it, Hallelujah. Yes, God, it cannot thank survive in the name of Jesus, God, God as soon as your blood touches it, hallelujah, God, if we could just touch the hem of your garment, hallelujah. God, we could be made whole, God, yes, we ask Lord. that you come into our lives like never Lord before, Lord God, God Lord do Lord what Lord. only you can do, God, yes, open Jesus. us up, hallelujah, hallelujah, that we might receive you into our lives, yes, God, that Jesus. we might receive deliverance, hallelujah, that we might receive another filling in the yes, name God. of Jesus, hallelujah. God, somebody needs your power, somebody hallelujah. needs your strength, yes, God, we do. ask you to do it right, right now in the name, in of, the Jesus, name of Jesus, God, if they don't want to call on the name of Jesus, God, we're not worried about it. The Bible says every knee shall bow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every tongue confess, God, that, that you are Lord, yes, God, that Lord. you are King, God. You are the Rose of Sharon. You're yes, the great Lord. I am. You're everything we need you to be. Yes, Lord. And we say thank you right thank now in, you, the in the name of Jesus. God, we declare and decree today that we can already see things getting better. Hallelujah. God, we can it's already better. see it. Yes, right. Hallelujah. We can already yes, see it God. brighter yes, on the yes, other yes, side. Yes, Hallelujah. We can see the light at the end of the yes, tunnel, God, because yes, if it's in your word, God, we know that it will come to pass yes, in, the name, in the name of Jesus. God, we've seen you heal sickness before. God, yes, we've seen Lord. you heal disease. God, we've seen you raise yes, the dead Lord. in the name in of the Jesus. Name Hallelujah. Of Jesus. God, you can Jesus. still quicken it right now in the, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that the devil has no authority Hallelujah. to walk beside us. Yes, Hallelujah. He has no authority to walk in front of us, yes, God. Lord. But he can only run and try to catch us from behind, God, yes, or stay Lord. up under our feet. Yes, and Lord. we thank you for that in the we name of you. Jesus. You yes, walk Lord. with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You talk with us, yes, God. Lord. You tell us that we belong to you, God, yes, when Lord. everybody else forsakes us. Yes, Lord. God, we know that you will lift us up in the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We believe in your strength. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. We believe in your power. We believe in love. Yes, Lord. God, we believe that you have given us a sound mind. Yes, Lord. God, we leave here today yes, knowing, Lord. God, you. that we can have hope in you. Yes, Jesus. And that we can have hope in a future, God. Yes, Lord. Because you are the future. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You be blessed tonight. And I thank Tyson for joining me. Those scriptures in Psalms 118, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and Hebrews 11. Read all three of those. That's Hebrews 11, 2 Timothy chapter 1, and Psalm 118. Read those scriptures. Let them minister to you. Pray. Amen. Expand your mind. Build your faith because your faith will overcome your fears. So Amen. be blessed tonight in Jesus' name. We love you. Amen. Amen. Good night.